An article named What is Biophobia? Your Guide to the Hidden Experience of Millions introduces and explores the concept of biophobia, defined as feelings of fear, dislike or disgust towards animals and the natural world. This stands in contrast to the well-documented biophilia and innate affinity for nature. While extensive research highlights the physical and mental health benefits of spending time in nature, the phenomenon of biophobia has been relatively overlooked, leading to a poor understanding of its causes, prevalence, and treatments. The author's recent study, involving a systematic review of 196 existing studies, aims to shed light on this negative relationship with nature. Biophobia is framed as more than just a personal aversion. It results in reduced exposure to nature's health benefits and can undermine conservation efforts by fostering support for the culling of perceived threatening species. The research notes a rapid growth in biophobia studies, though they remain fewer than those on positive human nature relationships and are scattered across disciplines like psychology, social sciences, and conservation, often in isolated silos. The causes of biophobia are identified as multifaceted, stemming from both external and internal factors. External factors include one's physical environment and level of exposure to different species, as well as social attitudes and media narratives. For example, movies like Jaws creating widespread fear of sharks. Internal factors involve personal traits such as age, health, and, crucially, knowledge. Greater understanding of how nature works and specific species knowledge is linked to lower risks of biophobia, whereas feelings of vulnerability correlate with higher fear, particularly of large carnivores. These drivers often interact in complex ways, and biophobia itself can create a feedback loop influencing attitudes and behaviors, such as avoiding natural areas or supporting predator calls that reinforce the fear. The article points out that biophobia is not limited to legitimately dangerous animals like snakes or spiders, but can also be directed at harmless or beneficial species, such as native frogs. Regarding treatments, the study categorizes several approaches, acknowledging no single solution works for everyone. Exposure therapy is one method, ranging from simple habituation to clinical interventions, for example, systematically desensitizing a fear of spiders. Education is another vital tool, from formal studies to informational signs in nature reserves, helping people understand their surroundings and species behavior. Finally, conflict mitigation addresses rational negative sentiments by proposing practical solutions to reduce negative experiences, such as protecting farmers' crops from wild animals. A key finding of the review is a disciplinary divide. Psychology and social studies focus on human impacts, but often define nature too broadly or narrowly, while environmental science focuses on conservation impacts, but oversimplifies social and psychological drivers. The author argues that integrating these complementary perspectives is essential to fully understand and mitigate biophobia. The article concludes by noting that while most people enjoy nature, signs suggest biophobia is increasing, particularly as urban lifestyles create greater distance from the natural world. This trend makes it increasingly important to foster a love for nature to preserve both human health benefits and stable ecosystems. Ultimately, recognizing and addressing our hate for nature is presented as a crucial step in reversing the trend of negative human nature relationships.